Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I missed you. Let me just start off by saying that I hope you guys are doing amazing. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving with your friends and family. And to those that are having hard times, I'm sending you a huge hug. Porque en estos momentos hay que pensar en todos. I hope you guys are all healthy. And let me just say that I can hear in HD. Fíjense que estaba de sorda for like months. I'm always the type of bitch that's like, what? And I'm not talking about just in parties or when there's loud music. Bueno, pues ahí olvídate. I'm going to be saying what more. But I'm talking about in general. When Adán is talking to me, my parents or anyone, I'm like, what? Y es porque, haz de cuenta, ya casi tenía un panal de abejas aquí. <laughs> Dude, I freaking cleaned my ear and bro, you don't even want to know. You don't even want to know, dude. But just know that I can hear in HD. Okay, you know what I'm going to tell you anyways. Me salió una pinche bola. Me, me han salido peores. But dude, me salió una bola así como el tamaño de una pinche lenteja. I guess it was really old dried up earwax. And as soon as it came off, I was like... <gasps> Ah, chinga, I heard a little pop and I was like, ah, chinga, I can hear so much better. If you haven't cleaned your ears, clean them. You're gonna feel so much better, I promise you. But like I was saying, since Thanksgiving just passed, Christmas is next and then New Year's, I'm in the festive mood to talk about spooky stories that happened in the holidays. Les pregunté en mi Instagram story if you guys had any paranormal or just horror stories in general about something that happened during the holidays. Loki, I was expecting a little more chisme. <laughs> Pero ya sé que les encantan las historias paranormales. Y me mandaron más historias paranormales. Pero si quieren, puedo hacer uno del chisme. De drama y chisme que pasa during the holidays when the tías get together, porque ya sé que las cosas se ponen intensas cualquier chisme que tengas que te pasó en un día festivo comment it down below or you can always DM me on Instagram or email me so I got a lot of spooky stories about Christmas yeah, mire más como de navidad so I'm pretty excited to read them, also guys before I move forward with my video, what was I gonna say? Dude, I did ask forgot what I was going to say or show you guys. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Before I move forward with this video, les quiero decir that I opened a broadcast channel on Instagram. Mira, aquí está. Dice Erica's Angels. Ahí les escribo cositas and some chisme. So if you haven't joined, go join. No me dejen plantada. Por favor. All right, let me look for the stories. Quick disclaimer, one of these stories doesn't involve Christmas or a holiday. But either way, these are all great stories, so I hope you enjoy them. Hi, Erica. First thing first, I love watching your videos. Oh, thank you. Especially during work, they keep me up, lol. I have a scary story for you. Recently, my mom told me about something she went through when she was a kid. She lived in Colima, Mexico, in a shed inside a terreno at the time with my grandmother, her great-grandpa, and her three siblings. One evening, they had hung the clothes outside to dry after washing it. But then a storm hit. So my grandma sent them all running to bring the clothes inside. Oh damn, that's a mission. Like imagine all the clothes getting wet. So my grandma sent them all running to bring the clothes inside. My mom was the last one to get to the ropes. So she stayed last getting the clothes as well. She had already seen and dreamed stuff but nothing that was scary at all for her. If anything, it was just kids that would play with her. There was a broken mirror in front of the ropes, and when she took the piece of clothing covering it, she saw a bald head doll hanging by the neck from a tree crying blood. My mom said hell nah and got to running back home. A couple of months later, her great-grandpa passed away. 
My mom says she started feeling uneasy and seeing stuff like shadows and at times waking up and seeing somebody praying through the mirror. We've always been very prone to intuition and energy, so I can imagine how uncomfortable she must have been. She then said she kept dreaming about that same tree. But in the dream, there were many kids running naked around it. And one specific night in the dream, there was a coffin in the tree and her great grandmother was in it. My grandma added to the story and said that my mom's great grandmother would always say jokingly that when she dies, she will come back and take her husband. Like I mentioned earlier, he passed a couple of months later after my mom had that dream. After that, time passed, they moved out, and later workers were sent to clean up the land. My mom said that there were skeleton parts of children found buried where the tree that she dreamed so much about was standing. Before they left, my aunt, which is her youngest sister, would run around the big house, which was their great grandparents, and laugh while pointing to certain places and corners in the house. When she would get asked what she was doing, she would say she was playing. When asked who she was playing with, she would say her great grandpa came to play with her. Mind you, she was the baby of the family and he spoiled her the most. The part that absolutely terrified me was when my grandma mentioned that when he was already on his deathbed, he told my grandmother that after he dies, he would come back and take my auntie with him, just like his wife died with him. My grandma said that she told him ni madres and prayed her way out of losing her youngest daughter. Loki, I think that's scary as fuck when someone's about to pass away or in general they just say, oh, yo te voy a llevar o me voy a llevar a alguien because I don't know if it's a coincidence but I've heard of people that it has happened to them que escuchan que alguien dice eso y después after that person que dijo eso passes away Otra persona se muere luego, luego. That's Loki fucked up too. If I die, I wouldn't take anyone. The only thing I would do is jalarle las patas a las viejas ardidas envidiosas cucarachas that have done me dirty, but that's about it. For my eyebrows, I'm gonna be using this palette by Tres Luce Beauty. Loki, I wanna do something different for my eyeshadow, but I don't know what color to use. The tin marine de doping we cucara macara titere fue. Yo no fui fue tete. Pégale, pégale que este merito fue. Ah, I got a basic one. Well, I mean, the shade is beautiful, but I was expecting some color. Zapatito blanco, zapatito azul. Dime cuantos años tienes tu. Ahora me tocó este, so I guess I'm gonna be using these two. For the darker eyeshadow, I'm going to be doing a wing and then I'm going to be doing this right here. I'm doing that little shape, kind of like when people do graphic eyeliner but with a brown eyeshadow. Hi Erica, my story happened either Christmas or New Year's Day. I was like around 12 years old and everyone was having fun. When it was around 2, everyone started to leave to their own place. And obviously, me being young, I was getting ready to go to sleep. Some of my cousins were going to stay the night too. Some of my cousins stayed at the living room, others at their own room. I stayed at my grandparents' room since they left to Mexico. I slept and around 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning I woke up because I felt the bed corner sink a bit like when someone sits down. I looked and saw a little girl combing her hair at the edge of the bed. I started to call my cousin's name one by one but she didn't turn around so I started to pray with my eyes closed. I opened them and nothing was there. 
Later on, like a week, we went to go visit my grandparents since they came back from Mexico. I went to their room and told my grandma about it. And she said, ¿A poco tú también la viste? I was confused, but I said yes. And she was like, sí, yo también la veo y le hablo. Porque no me da malas vibras. Like saying she is a nice ghost. Later on, she told me that she also sees another woman by the living room hallway. This is one of my paranormal experiences that I've had in my life. I grew up in Mazatlan, Sinaloa, a tourist beach town in Mexico. It's small but beautiful. But me and my family live towards the rural side of it. My mom's dad, mi abuelo Juan, had been dead for a few years. But me, my mom, and grandma still lived in the house he built. Well, he used to own a rocking chair when he was alive. And he always claimed that it was his favorite chair. When he passed, my abuela refused to get rid of the rocking chair and kept it in the same spot for seven to eight years after. Aw, that's so sweet of her. Whenever anyone tried moving it or getting rid of it, she would lose it and fight. This is where it gets scary. I vividly remember it being the Christmas before my abuela passed. Before me and my mom moved to Cali. And it was Christmas Eve, a little before midnight. I was trying to sleep but couldn't due to the excitement of being a chamaca and I heard a loud creaking from the kitchen slash living room area. Now remember, my grandpa built the house. It was small, built with brick, and the rooms were almost all next to each other, so any noise could be heard by anyone. But only I heard the creaking. So I got out of bed and slowly made my way to the hallway. Because the house was so old, we didn't have hallway light or much natural light due to the brick being so thick. It was pitch black. I walked into the dark hallway and heard the creaking get louder. I got closer to the kitchen and through the small little window on top of the main door, I saw that the rocking chair was moving back and forth, back and forth with so much speed. Like a person was going forward and backwards with consistency. No mames. I ran to my room and forced myself to sleep because I was so scared. The next morning, I told my abuelita what happened and she went pale. She pulled me into her room and told me very quietly. Tu abuelo. Ay, no manches. <sighs> okay, it says, Tu abuelo a veces viene en la noche. Por eso me encierro. Por eso me encierro en el cuarto. I didn't understand what she meant, but that same Christmas night, she went up to the chair, prayed and prayed. And before she left to her room, she said, Deja la niña en paz, Juan. And locked herself in the room. This is scary as fuck, guys. What the fuck? No one gave up the chair, not even after my grandma died. And until now, the chair stays in that house. I just pictured a chair moving like en putiza back and forth. Imagine seeing that. And then your grandma saying, déjala en paz, Juan. Well, she said, deja la niña en paz, Juan. Oh my God, dude. It sounds like if he's alive, like if he's trying to play around with you or something. It's still a little scary, but it's cute. All right, guys, I'm going to go in with my blush now. This is still my favorite blush palette ever. Porque tiene todos los colores and it has a big ass mirror. I like to mix the colors, even the weird ones, like this one that looks kind of purple. It actually looks really cute on. Look, me voy a poner poquito aquí. 
Hola hermosa, before I start, I just want to tell you that I love watching your videos while doing my makeup. Aw, oh, thank you. Anyway, so it was around Christmas time and my mom's side of the family was visiting from Mexico City. A little background, my mom and my mom's sister are known for being able to dream with the dead and talk to the dead in their dreams. So I was around 13, I was sleeping with my mom's youngest sister and all I remember is her literally sitting up from her sleep and screaming. I was right next to her and I tried to wake her up, but she wouldn't. And she was having a conversation, still in her sleep, saying, No te vayas, no te vayas a ahogar. No mames. It looks like she was saving a kid from getting drowned by La Llorona. And I was like, oh my god, what is going on? So everyone rushes into the room and we finally are able to wake her up. And she just starts bawling and saying she was able to connect with a girl who died in my house. I guess they drowned her or something. I never looked into it because I was scared of knowing. But yes, she never came to stay at my house. I guess she was also trying to stop her from drowning. Like it's complicated but basically my tia told the little girl she's gonna drown but that's how she died. It's a little foggy, but yeah. La neta, no disrespect, but having family that comes to your house to tell you that? <laughs> I would be like, ay no tía, mejor no venga. But I mean, también ella pobrecita, you know, it's not her fault. And well, she didn't go anymore. I would be so scared though, like if my tía came over and then I'm asleep next to her and I just hear fucking wake up like, I would be like, ah, chinga, esta se convirtió en zombie, o qué pedo? And the story of the girl drowning, I'm just like, pobrecita. I feel like drowning is so fucking terrifying and a horrible way to die. I wouldn't have looked into it either, porque I would be so scared of knowing more. A veces es mejor no saber y hacerte pendeja. I'm gonna be using this lip gloss by Rare Beauty. This one is in the shade Nearly Rose. A ver como se ve. This lipstick, I was about to give it away because I do give away most of my makeup and I had it in a box to give away stuff. And I'm pretty sure this has happened to you. A veces cuando haces la cajita de cosas que vas a dar a tus primas en México or just like anyone, you end up seeing some stuff and you're like, never mind, you know what? I can actually rock this. Pues esto me pasó con este labial. Ahora para mis aretes, I'm gonna be wearing these hearts that are so cute. My mom always be buying me the randomest earrings. I love them. Everything that my mom gives me, I'm like, yeah, I can rock it. Oh, they're so cute. They're like some really cute, simple hearts. And by the way, guys, for my nose highlight and the highlight que me puse in mis cheekbones, I actually used this by Tres Luce Beauty. I think it's actually an eyeshadow shimmer, but it just... It's Chef's Kiss as a highlight. Tiene brillitos como medios holographic and they just dude they give i know i'm not the only one using eyeshadow shimmers as highlight because i saw some girlies on tiktok use a liquid eyeliner with glitter as highlight for their nose and i actually need that one too all right guys so this is my final look what do we think <laughs> If you have any scary stories that involve Christmas, New Year's, or Thanksgiving, please feel free to send them to me. I will keep them anonymous, así que mandenme todo. Thank you everyone that shared their stories today. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can get notified for the next time I post. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!